Good afternoon. I'm here with Congressman Joe Courtney from the Connecticut 2nd Congressional District, and we're going to talk about the America's Affordable Health Choices Act, H.R. 3200. Good afternoon. How are you doing, Kat? So, President Obama has put health care reform at the top of his domestic agenda. In Congress, what's the political climate surrounding the bill? Uh, I think if, if we step back a little bit, basically it's a, a positive um, situation right now. Really, it's been 15 years since George Mitchell declared uh, health care dead in 1994, from the last time we had a major push for health care reform. And uh, right now we have a bill that has cleared two committees in the House, one committee in the Senate. I think it's on the verge of getting through the final uh, House Committee, Energy and Commerce, probably within the next day or so. And, um, you know, that's progress. That, that means that we, we really have a serious legislative effort uh, to get a bill um, through the process by the end of 2009. Um, you know, it's never always the, a smooth road when you, you're going through a body this large uh, and with an issue this big. Uh, but I, I would say right now we still have positive momentum. Sure. Uh, could you talk a little bit about energy and commerce? What's going on in that committee? Well, again, the um, uh, it's a committee that has a lot of um, control over bill writing. For, for the area of health care, and um, there's no question, as was you know, well reported, that the, uh, about seven members from the Blue Dog Caucus uh, were not prepared to accept the bill as it came out of my committee, uh, Education and Labor. And uh, for the leadership in the House, I mean, really, the, the choice that they have at this point is, and we're still today taping this while uh, Energy and Commerce is still deliberating, uh, was either to let the bill die, uh, to bypass the Energy and Commerce Committee, or to um, you know, bargain aggressively with those members of the Blue Dog Caucus and, and get a compromise that will at least get the bill uh, to the full floor of the House. And I think the third option is really what's going to happen, is right. that we've got four Blue Dogs who are willing to sign on to an amended version of what we passed in the House Education and Labor Committee. But that's not the final word uh, on the legislation. Um, and everybody knew this at the beginning, is that once the three committees sort of all landed on the floor, that the leadership of the Rules Committee was going to craft uh, a final version for consideration. And I think at the end of the day, that's going to be a bill that will look a lot more like um, the more progressive version that came out of mm -hmm. education and labor. Now, speaking of progress, President Obama has tried to link economic recovery with health care reform. Do you think that's a valid connection, particularly in your capacity as a former small business owner? Absolutely. I mean, obviously, a recession really is not over until employment picks up. And if you talk to a small business person, a small employer, like I was a short time ago, um, probably one of the biggest um, obstacles to expanding staff is really the cost of benefits. And if we can uh, accomplish the goal of allowing small businesses to have stable uh, health coverage that they can um, afford and budget for, and that doesn't uh, uh, submit people to this really harsh system that we have in the insurance market of pre-existing condition exclusions and rescissions if you get sick or, or have an injury, I think that's going to make the job market uh, much healthier, and, and particularly at the small business end uh, of the system. Now, you mentioned pre-existing conditions. You introduced an amendment uh, that passed in the House Education and Labor Committee that intends to close pre-existing conditions loopholes. Can you explain what that amendment does and why you think it's the right thing for the American people? Sure. I mean, the, the overall bill, which we took up, will eliminate the, this incredibly barbaric practice of excluding people because they have a chronic illness or had some injury years ago. and uh, But unfortunately, as, the, as it was initially uh, written, that wouldn't happen until 2014, when the National Purchasing Exchange goes online and will allow people um, a vehicle to, to buy insurance. My amendment basically accelerated the restrictions, um, the use of those types of exclusions, um, and, and to move it up to six months after uh, enactment of, of the legislation so that it would provide relief earlier for people who, um, you know, particularly at the older age, 50 to age 64, that, uh, I mean, it is very hard to go out there and buy an insurance policy uh, because they um, basically redline you uh, as too high a risk. Now, uh, you just mentioned the year 2014 when most of the bill's main provisions are going to come into effect. 
Now, one of the criticisms of the America's Affordable Health Choices Act has been to say, it was rushed, where's the crisis? Uh, is there something to that criticism? No. Uh, again, uh, anybody who's been alive in America over the last two years knows that the really <clears throat> sort of the broad outlines of this debate have been out in the public uh, and um, there for anyone who cares uh, to really see about whether or not you know, we would have a single payer system or a multi payer system, whether or not we would reform the insurance market, whether we would strengthen public programs like Medicare and Medicaid, and whether we would try to create a new system of incentives to, to get uh, those public programs under better control. And, and really, you know, we're at a point now where all of these ideas, which have been you know, talked about ad nauseum, are, are part of an overall package in a bill. Again, I think the legislative process is always about you know, intelligent amendments being added and, and debated and discussed. But the notion that somehow this is you know, just sort of coming out of the blue is ridiculous. And um, again, for members of Congress, that's particularly um, disingenuous because the basic structure of how we are going to reform health care in this bill is to basically adopt the same type of insurance plan that members of Congress have, which is a uh, purchasing exchange through the federal government that every member gets to access when they get sworn into office with a nice choice of plans and very stable prices. Sure. Now, have you found there to be some confusion regarding exactly how this bill seeks to reform the American health care system? Well, certainly uh, there is confusion in the public. We know that from a lot of the polling, but a lot of that confusion uh, was created intentionally by opponents of reform. Again, raising questions about delay, which um, again, I, I think are very um, false and disingenuous. Uh, a lot of questions uh, being raised uh, based on really just totally um, uh, fear-mongering tactics like telling seniors that a, a, a smart program that's included in the bill to uh, allow people to get uh, uh, health care directives or patient directives, powers of attorney, uh, do not resuscitate orders, um, discussed in an educational basis once every five years has somehow now been morphed into uh, mandatory euthanasia. And, and, and you know, Kit, I mean, we've been getting calls in my office from people who are watching some of these cable shows uh, promoting this uh, really almost libelous idea. And, um, and, and as a result of that, I mean, there, there's confusion. Uh, sure. But I think, um, you know, if you go through uh, a lot of these claims, and, and I, I, I think you, you can rebut uh, almost all of them uh, with the facts and with the actual language of the statute. Now, one of the groups that's uh, well represented in your uh, district is military families. Um, how will this bill affect the health care that they receive through TRICARE and through the VA? Uh, you're right. We have a Navy base with over 7,000 sailors uh, in my district. They all today are covered by TRICARE, which is the military health care program uh, operated by the Department of Defense. And the answer is it will, they will not be affected at all. Uh, that's treated as a qualified health plan under the, uh, the bill and therefore um, is excluded from participation in the purchasing exchange. And um, as we know, President Obama's budget uh, this year has um, really strong support for TRICARE and, uh, and that covers military retirees. You know, the, the, the folks who've been in the military a long time, they, they get to keep that coverage after they retire again. So TRICARE is just completely protected and shielded. Same with veterans health care, uh, it's the VA. Uh, administers and operates. Uh, again, we, we got a lot of questions in my district about whether or not uh, President Obama is going to take away my TRICARE. Uh, and you certainly hear some of that rhetoric uh, on the floor and, and out in the blogosphere. Right. But the fact of the matter is, is that uh, the people wearing the uniform of this country will have the same health plan um, after passage as they have today, before passage.